So today we're going to be installing a Stage 3 Aero Kit and a Stage 3 Spoiler on my wife's 2016 Corvette. So we're going to break this into three separate parts. So in, in the case that you just buy the front splitter or you just buy the side skirts or just the spoiler, you'll be able to fast forward to those or just watch that individual video on its own. So sit back, relax, and we'll be showing you how to do each piece. So before I get started, um, there's a few things I want to touch base on, on what you're going to need. Uh, thank you, Terry. You're welcome. Um, you're going to need a, a nylon pry bar kit, which you can get from uh, Harbor Freight very inexpensively. I think it was $7.99. Um, it does come with the full instruction set for all the different modules that you're going to be doing, because we broke this into three different modules, one for the, the uh, front splitter as well as the side skirts, and also for the, uh, the Stage 3 um, spoiler. Uh, so all the instructions are included, all of the hardware is included, except for the uh, wide sticky tape that you're going to want to use on the front splitter as well as the side skirts. The sticky tape that's used for the stage 3 uh, um, spoiler on the back, it does come with that. But you will not need any other hardware besides that. Uh, as far as uh, tools, you're going to need a 7 millimeter socket, you're going to need a 10 millimeter socket as well as a ratchet and an extension, and you will need a uh, T15 Torx, as well as the, you're going to still have to use your ratchet and the extension for that. Um, besides that, I believe that's all there is that you're going to need besides the nylon pry bar kit. Again, this is from uh, Harbor Freight. You can get these for about $7.99. Um, now, on my car today, you're going to be seeing, actually, this is not my car. This is Jennifer's car, my wife's car. Um, you're going to be seeing that it's a Z51 and it already has a Z51 spoiler on the back. Now, if you had gotten a base car uh, and didn't have the, uh, the spoiler on the back, um, it comes with a, uh, a template right here inside the box uh, to be able to put that up and know exactly where to drill the holes. Uh, but if you're pulling a Z51 spoiler off, then the holes are exactly the same. You will not have to do any drilling. So just wanted to cover all that ahead of time. Um, so that's, that's about it. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with the video and we'll get you going. So the next part of this is that we're going to be changing out the factory Z51 spoiler with a stage three uh, Z06 style spoiler. And in order to do that, we have to take the back bumper of the car entirely off. So I'm going to kind of go over it a little bit while Terry's gathering all of the different tools that we're going to need to be able to do this. And because we have access to a lift, uh, we're going to cheat a little bit and be able to lift the car up to be able to get to the bottom screws. Now you will not have to do that. Uh, you can do this on the floor. It just will, it just makes it easier for us to film it and for us to be able to stand underneath and unscrew the screws. But what you're going to be needing to do is one, you're going to need to be able to get into the trunk. So you're going to pop the trunk open. Number two, what you're going to do is you're going to be pulling this little trim plate right here out. Okay, this comes completely out. And you can see that Terry's going to, Terry's going to do it. It's hard for me to do that with the, uh, with the camera in my hand. Okay, but that just, if you just finesse it out, it will come loose. Like so. Just got to keep playing with them. Okay. Just got to be careful that you don't pull the rubber away from it. You're just pulling the trim out. Okay, just like that. There we go. Just like that. You can leave that inside the trunk. Okay, just like so. All right. Now, the next thing that you're going to be having to do is you have to take these 15, uh, 15 Torx screws out all the way across the very back of the car. I can do that. Okay. And then at that point, we're going to have, uh, we'll be lifting the car up and we'll be going through showing you all of the different things that we're going to have to do there. There's, uh, there's uh, quite a few little screws that we've got to pull loose. But 
But again, all of this can be done on the, on the ground. Um, the only reason that we're using the lift is just to be able to get a little bit better camera angle on this. Okay, I think everything's off up in here that we need to take off. Okay. Now we can go up and do the rest of the stuff. Right. So now Terry's gonna go ahead and he's gonna lift the car up. Now again, if you were on the ground, you just would climb underneath and um, you'll have to take, uh, take some screws loose. So we're gonna show you that in a second. After we get all this done, we're gonna have to use a nylon pry tool that we'll put some blue tape right across here to protect the paint and we'll have to pry this, uh, hit the uh, taillight bezel out because right up in this corner, right up here behind this vent is a 15 Torx right here and also on the opposite side right here. There is three seven millimeter screws that are right here. You've got two seven millimeter screws that are right here. If you look up inside here, you're gonna see one and two 10 millimeter screws right there. And then you're also gonna see two more seven millimeter as well as seven more millimeter, seven more, uh, three more seven millimeter screws. Now, once we get those off, we'll be able to pull the two mud flaps that's on both corners here. We'll have to pull them off the car and that will reveal two, um, two uh, T T15 Torx up in here that locks the fender well onto the bumper. Once we've got those, those all out, then we'll be able to pull the whole car, the, uh, the whole bumper off. Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna go right across all the way. computer port, didn't it? <laughs> you know, what's funny is I have to look into that one and see. My my 2014 Stingray, that's supposed to be where the um, where the tow hook screws in. But on my oh, 14, okay. there was no receiver inside there, so it's just empty inside. Oh, all right. So I'm There's wondering... nothing back there to mount anything to. Right, but on the 16, there should be. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah so, but I don't know that. I haven't opened that door yet. So now okay, we've got, got these two screws yep. right here, one there and one there, which are yep. 10 millimeter. Okay, these here, there's two of them. This one here seems to be a little tight, so we, there we go. Let me break this one loose. Okay. Now, let me use the gun and I'll run them things out of there. That's one. Okay, we're gonna take these mud flap things off right here. You can just reach underneath here and kind of gently just start pulling it and it'll pop right off as so. And it comes off the same way. Come on, there you go. And after you do that, that reveals the two T15 Torx that are right here on each side. So you've got two here on this side and two on the other side. And again, you don't have to, as you can see, you don't have to take the, the tire off the car to be able to get these bolts out, or these screws, I should say. Okay. Now I know it seems like it's a daunting task to do this. Um, it's not hard, you just need to take your time. And like I said, if you follow this video, we're, we're not cutting anything out here. It's, it's, uh, it's pretty much step by step what you need to do. So if you follow this video, you'll be able to do this yourself. Okay, all right. So now, now so just to recap here, we've got, we've got all the screws out of the bottom of the car. We've got the two screws out from underneath here where the exhaust is. We've taken all of the screws across the top underneath the trunk lid, as well as that trim piece loose. Now the only thing, and we've got our two T15 
torques out of each side here as well as the mud flaps. So the only thing that's holding this bumper onto the car now is just the T15 Torx that's hidden up here behind this vent. So Terry's gonna go ahead and lower the car down and then we're gonna go ahead and we're going to put some blue tape across here to protect the paint. And we're gonna use a, uh, a vinyl or a, um, a plastic pry tool to be able to pry this bezel off to be able to get to that screw. What we're gonna do here this is the one part that Terry is always afraid to do. Um, so he always sticks me with this job because this is the part where, this is where the tool touches the paint and he doesn't want to touch that part of it. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put tape right up in here like this and it doesn't, probably isn't gonna show as well using blue tape on a blue car, but I'm just kind of tucking that paint or that tape underneath. So I'm gonna put two layers of tape here like so underneath there it's like that so that way when I go to stick this pry tool in here I'm gonna go in there like so you can see right there now this one has a little bit of gap in it which is very nice this is probably the fifth or sixth bumper that we have done like this where we've changed the spoilers out and this is the first one that's ever been able to just automatically slide in there so don't expect this okay this we're getting <laughs> lucky on this one okay so now all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pry this out just a little bit. You can see how that just popped loose. It sounds like you're breaking it, but you're not. Just like that. Okay, and then you're gonna get, get underneath there. And I'm gonna have to probably come over a little bit more, so I'm gonna put a little more tape on here because I don't want my pry tool to touch the paint. like so. Get underneath there again. You can see that I've gotten completely underneath there and I've been able to get this out. Now don't try to force it. Don't try to he-man it. Just, just get it so you, you can wiggle it out. It, it will come out. Okay, just like so. You don't have to get the pry tool in there anymore. You'll be able to get it to come loose. It's just, you just gotta take your time. Okay. I'm just slowly wiggling it. Okay, as you get there. Now if you get it too much in a bind, it will jam right here. So you wanna try to start to pull it out at the corner a little bit. It looks like I might have to put a little more tape on this corner because I'm just getting stuck. Yeah, there it went. Know. Okay. Like so. And then you can see it came loose. Now, yeah. if you look right up inside here, you can see that there's a 15 T15 torque right there. And that's what you're going to need to be able to take out. Once you get that one out on this side, you do the same thing on the other side, the bumper will be able to come right out. Okay, so we're on the other side here. And we're just gonna go ahead and start right here in the middle. Now you can see what I was talking about. I couldn't, the other one fell right into the hole, but it didn't on this one. So you have to kind of help it in there just a little bit. This one's a little bit tight. So you can try to lift up a little bit and you'll just have to wiggle it. You gotta be careful because you don't wanna scratch the paint. But you can see right there, I just got it in there. When I get, once you get it wedged in, you're okay. As long as you don't let it slide back out on you. Now that's funny that I say that it's, this is one of the hardest ones I've had. So that's funny. But again, just take your time with this. Don't force it. Don't rush it. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a bunch of chips in your paint. 
Okay, so just take your time. Okay. Once you get to that point, again, remember, you're just finessing it out. It's like so. It will come. It just takes a little bit of a little bit of wiggle in it. And then if you pull it too much, you'll end up breaking it. Okay. Being a bugger, huh? Yeah. There you go. There we go. All right. Now we're gonna take them two screws that he was talking about out of them corners. Pull that tape off, get that out of the way. And now uh, Terry's gonna take those screws out and I'm gonna take the camera again. I'm glad of that. If <laughs> nobody can see that, it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> okay, these screws are up here in these little corners. Try not to drop them. Dropping them on the coming out side, probably not as bad as dropping them when you're putting it all back together. Because yeah, you, yeah. That's, that's no fun at all. Okay, got one more over here. Now what we're gonna do, we've got all of our screws out everywhere. The only thing we have left to do is we're gonna grab the bumper through this hole here, through the vent hole, and we're just going to pull the, the bumper out, and then we're going to set it down onto, um, onto this uh, little pad that we created. Now, the box that you got your spoiler in is the perfect height for it, so hopefully you've saved the box and that you can wrap some, you know, a towel or a blanket or something like that on the box to protect the bottom of the bumper, but it'll be at the perfect height. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull this out, and we're going to set it down on this cushion. Okay. Well, there, there we go. go. I got this side. Okay. And then at that point, what you want to do is something inevitably always will hang. So we're going to want to there come and just pull it, pull it free. Okay. Now. You don't want to just let this thing fall down, so you want to kind of help support it. So if you have two people, that's wonderful that you can do that. The cabling on the back will pretty much hold it in place. As you can see, we're not touching it now, but you don't want it to, you don't want to take the chance that it falls. So if you've got, you know, a couple people here that's holding it, that is great. It's just that much easier and better. Okay, but you, it, as long as you do this right and you support it with that box and a, some sort of cushion or something like that, you'll be okay. Now, um, now what has to happen? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab the uh, I'm gonna grab the camera back again and I'm gonna come back in here so Terry can show you what we have to do. But we have to take the tail lights out of the bumper because the screws are are going straight down into the bumper here to get the spoiler off. So we have to get the, the uh, taillights out of the way. So we'll pull the taillights out, we'll set them down off to the side over here, and then at that point we'll be able to get underneath to those screws and we'll be able to get the, the, uh, the spoiler off and then we'll be able to put the new one on. Okay, there's four screws. They're kind of easy to see. There's one right here in the corner. They come out fairly easy. Now this is a seven millimeter screw also, correct? I think they're sevens. Then there's one right underneath here. It has got a little, it's right here, just by this plug. Okay. 
You need one right here. And the fourth one's right up here. And once you get this one out, the light should come right out. You just take the light and lay it down. Just to where it rests nice. You don't have to, just so it's not doing anything. Don't try to push it down or anything. Just kind of let it stay there. There's a line right here. This is a cable. So you don't want to be really pulling it on or anything. Just kind of let the light kind of lay wherever it feels comfortable. This side over here is a piece of cake. Just lay it down in the bottom. Then you just kind of work around. There's one there, and you just kind of work them, and you can feel where they are. Three, and one more right here. All right, the ones that hold the spoiler on are 10 millimeter. Deep socket is easier. And there's two in the corner. Once you get them broken loose, they just come off of your fingers. And just go along and feel them, you can find them. About this time in the in the video, um, every time I'll let somebody let everybody know that if you've decided it after watching this video so far, and you decide that you don't want to do this, and you happen to live in the uh, in California, or want to or want to come to the Sacramento uh, Yuba City area, um, we have a couple different shops that we can do this, and we are an authorized installation uh, center for Extreme Online Store. There, so. There. There is another one up in Reading. If you make an appointment, we can go up in that area also. Right. Yep. So if you if you guys are in that areas uh, or want to drive to those areas, we can accommodate you and we can go ahead and we can do this for you. Um, so if if that's the case, reach out to us at the Corvette Channel at the Corvette Channel at gmail .com and let us know what you need done, um, and um, we'll be happy to give you a quote on it. Okay, now I want to make sure that I got them all, because if you miss one of these and you start trying to pull it off, it's not going to work very well. And I, I got, got them all. Okay. okay. So in that case, guys, what we're going to do here, because this part, this part right here of the of your your bumper is exposed and you can see it. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put some, some blue tape in here. I'm gonna try to wiggle it down in there. I wanna try to make sure that when I go to use my, my pry tool, my nylon pry tool, I'm still not going to hurt the paint. Um, so I'm gonna try to get some, get some tape down in there to protect it. Okay. Definitely don't want, just because I'm trying to put some new gadgets on the car, I don't want to screw it up. He just doesn't want his wife mad at him. Sure don't. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to do that. We're going to just kind of pry up just a little bit, back down. And you can hear the tape is starting to, the sticky tape is starting to crack underneath there, which is good. And it popped it free. So we're just going to walk that all the way over. Okay. Okay, it's like so. So we just had to get it started on this one. So there you go. this one came off pretty darn easy. Okay. I would like to thank Eric and his team over at Extreme Online Store for sponsoring the Corvette channel. Without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do this. Thank you. So what we're gonna do now is all we'll be doing is we'll pull this tape back off. We're gonna clean the top of this bumper off. 
Okay, you need to put these little studs in. And one side there's a, a slotted screwdriver end. You don't want to leave that at, at the top because when you screw them in, and then you don't screw them tight. You just take and just put them, just give them a little quarter of a turn. Just get them a little snug, right? Just snug them up. But make sure you don't, that you put them in with the slot out. Okay, and you just go all the way down. Just keep putting them in. Okay, and you give them all a little snug. And we should be ready to go. They give you these, the big ones. But you don't want to use them. You just want to use these. You take a little hole punch. Just kind of get it in the middle. Punch it out. Here I am with the sticky stuff again. And then you just take and keep putting them on each one of them. Just slide them over. There's a sticky side and there's not a sticky side. The sticky side, you want to go down against the spoiler. These here are actually like cushions. And this, these little hole punches are perfect size for doing this. Now, the next step is we're going to take on these. You can see these little indentations here. And that's where you need to put tape. And then a, there's a little bit right yep. along this edge, right in yep. here, this little area. You can put some in there also. Now, just kind of start at one place and measure it out a little bit, how you think it's got to be right about there, and just whack them off. So as you can see, guys, there's a little, hopefully the camera picks it up. You can actually see right where it's supposed to go. So you're just, just cutting it and putting it right on there. Okay. Then you just kind of stick it in a little, keep it within the lines. This one here is not as hard as that, uh, that red stuff. <laughs> yeah, the two-sided stick tape does not, uh, uh, it's hard to get the get it to start, that's for sure. This stuff comes off pretty easy, so you shouldn't have, you guys shouldn't have any problem with that. So that's what that's supposed to look like. And then he's going to do it on this side over here also. And then in this, on um, this part of the kit, they do supply the two-sided stick tape that's needed to secure the wicker bill to the, to the spoiler. So you, if you are just doing just the spoiler um, part of it, then you don't have to run to the store to get sticky tape. You've, or they have included that part in this kit. I'm gonna go about there. Now this piece isn't really, really needed, guys, um, but it's, um, it just makes it for a nice firmer fit and it's not going to scratch the, uh, the tail light housing or the third brake light housing, I should say. And because of it being at a slight curve, don't just lay it down because it won't go straight. See, it's got like, a, like just a little slight curve in it. Yep. Okay, let me do one more. And if you don't, if the, if the ends don't meet, it's not, it's not a, something that's very critical. Okay. There you go. Okay, all you need to do is just line up the holes. Start with the middle here because it's, these things have a little bit of bend to them and you gotta kind of line the holes up. Okay, now it's all a matter of just putting the nuts back on here. Now, you can actually use the same nuts that came off of the old one onto the new one. 
I'm gonna put them all on my finger and then I'll pull on it. Okay, right here somewhere there it is. I just go by feel because it's kind of hard to stick my head down there without blood rushing to it. So <laughs> I just kind of do it by feel. Well, Terry, the viewers are probably seeing it better than you are seeing right now because the <laughs> GoPro is down in the bumper and they can see all the all your hand and the nuts and the screw and. That ratchet and extension and the socket and we'll get her back on. You know what? I'm gonna start in the middle here just because it's kind of a good place to start when you do this stuff. go and work from uh, all the way to the other side now you don't have to put them on real tight just snug them up so they feel good I'll finish up on the other side now we got last two right here. Okay. Gingerly get your light back up. And get this this here goes in like so. Let me grab one of these to put in here. Again, there's four seven millimeter screws that are holding the that holds the the uh, tail light into the bumper. Okay, now we just start tightening these up. Definitely use long screws. <laughs> Okay, now we just move over to the other one and do the same thing. Okay, we'll reach down in here and grab us a tail light. And we'll bring it on up in here and put her in place. Okay, the lights are in. Okay, so our next step here is we're going to go ahead and we're going to lift the bumper up and back onto the car, and then we'll be able to start putting the screws back together. So we're just going to grab it right here in the vent hole. Make sure you line these orange things up with the slots in there before you push it in. Correct. So okay. we're going to lift, lift it up and get yeah. it in. There we go. Okay. go. Make sure that the exhaust it clears the exhaust holes. So make right. sure that it's. You got to go up. Okay, we're good you there. You got to go up a whole bunch. Uh, there you go. 
Now there's this there's this little yeah. lip on the inside edge that I can't show you, but it's where the screws go. You have to make sure that it clears the body. Once it clears the body itself, then this will go on. So okay. and you just slide it in, just like so. You can hear it click, and it's in. Then you just put your screws in. Okay, okay this one here, be very careful because if you drop it in, you got to take the whole back of the car off again. So I need to put my finger right here and try to line it up and I can feel it go in and then just, okay, it started. I'll get the other side started, then I'll tighten them both up. Okay. Okay, I'll do the other one on the other side. Okay, All right. now we're just going to take these and Okay, that does them screws. Then you can take your trim that we took off, this here, and kind of wipe it off here, and you just snap it right back in place, as I'll show you momentarily. Okay, you just line them up. There's little slots. Just line them up, and you just start pushing them in. Okay, we're gonna put these basil, 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 yeah, basil, light covers. We're gonna put them on. You just kind of line up. There's, li you can see up in here. There's little slots, and these little things here. That's what you got to line up. And once you get them lined up, it should just snap right in. There you go. And that's all it is. And you just do the same thing on the other side. And that part is complete. You might have to push up a little bit on this just to get this lined up and then it'll go right in. Okay. And we got one more over here. Okay, now we'll start putting the ones across the bottom in. We're just going to put these screws back in. These are the torques. You got to just kind of wiggle it until they get lined up where they go. And then they'll go in. And this one's right in here. And these are T15 torques, guys. Pretty sure I mentioned that in the beginning when we were taking them off, but that way you're not guessing on the way way getting it finished. Okay, now you just snap this back in place. You want to make sure that this little tab. Yeah. See if I can get around here. Okay. You want to make sure this little tab is underneath. It's in between, like a little, like sandwiched in between them two. And it's here. It just snaps right back in place. Now we're just going to go and put all the bolts back in the bottom.
Now these two screws right here, inevitably every car that we've done, they need to be lined up just right. So if you run into a little bit of a problem, it's not you, it's just the fact that the car is, um, there's a couple different angles that are happening. There's like three different pieces that the screw is going through. And so you just need to line it up. Now, the fact that it's up in the air is helping Terry be able to get in there. When you're doing this on the ground, <laughs> um, it's almost, your eyeball is almost right at that hole. And so it makes it really hard to see. So you wanna make darn sure you've got some bright light, a shop light, a, a good strong flashlight or something like that so you can see it. As you can see, it wasn't that hard to, to uh, deal with this up in the air, but trust me, you do it on the ground and these two screws will be probably the hardest two screws that you do the, in the whole, the whole job. Okay. This is those two T15 torques that we were talking about earlier. Again, you don't have to have the wheels off to do this, but it, you want to have some sort of <clears throat> fairly small ratchet of sorts to be able to, uh, to get in there. There we go. You just gotta kind of play with, don't try to screw it in there if it feels tight at the first, because all you're gonna do is you're gonna strip out that little piece of metal and it's not fun putting them back in because you gotta take all this off back again to get to them. this back on like same thing on the other side just make sure you get this in between the bottom piece and then this here will just snap in it's the same thing most of them you just got to kind of wiggle a little bit and they'll go right in the only one you really fight with is, is that one up there that Scott was talking about these here are pretty much pretty simple. You just want to make sure that you get that little tongue thing that was on the mud flat. You want to make sure you get that up in there. Yeah, you want to get it sandwiched in there, yeah. done and under here guys we just got this one last screw this is the one that always gives me trouble and I just pull this down a little bit line up the holes and there's a, a, a bar in here just a metal bar it's a brace and it once you get it all lined up it just goes right in yeah but like he said laying on the ground <laughs> Cause your eyes are all at different angles and stuff and pretty soon you get frustrated and yep. next thing you want to do, you want to do something else. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So guys, the bumper's been off. We've replaced the spoiler. We've got everything all put back together. All of our bolts are tight. Now at this point we can lower the car back down and then we can go ahead and we can put the, uh, the wicker bills onto the spoiler itself and then we're done. Okay, so now we got the car back on the ground, and now the only thing else we have to do here before we put the wicker bills on is that we need to put some sticky tape on the spoiler itself. Now, it's actually marked, and I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but you can see where the tape is supposed to go. So it's supposed to go here, and then all the way across over to here, and then it's also supposed to go right in between these screws, just like that. Okay, so we're kind of making a square through here. So I'm just gonna take take some uh, take the scissors and I'll just cut this on here. Put this put this to here like so. Just like that. And then we're gonna take that little guy like that. Now you could choose to do it underneath the screw holes if you'd like. I'm doing it up at the little bit higher point so that way it doesn't have the chance of getting as much flex. 
you know, you're putting a lot, this, this spoiler is going to be moving or holding back a lot of air. So you want to be able to have this, you know, fairly secure. You don't want it breaking off or tearing off because it, I mean, it is bolted on, but the better you have it secured, the better you are. Now we're going to go down to here. Now, if you had a pair of tweezers, that would probably work a lot better than my using your fingernails. Okay. All right, so now we're just going to go ahead and we're going to put the stickers, or this two-way stick tape, on this, this side. And again, guys, this is marked where you're going to want to put it. The top line is not really marked, so I'm putting it right in between the screws, um, just like that. But uh, everything else is marked, so you'll be able to tell exactly where it's got to go. I kind of made that just a hair too long. So, and again, this this tape in this part of the kit is supplied, so you don't have. So, if you're only doing the the uh, stage three spoiler, you won't have to run down to the parts store to get the tape. So there it goes. All right. Okay. Now it's all done. That's good. So we've got this part done, and now the rest of it we're going to leave up to leave up to Terry here as he puts the uh, the wicker bills on. And so, like we were talking about here, the the kit comes. There's a total of, as you can see, there's a total of eight screws on four on each side. Right. The two outer screw holes is going to use the smaller, shorter screws, and the two inner screws are going to use the longer screws. And they're not that much longer than the other ones, but there is enough to notice. So you want to make sure that you use the long ones in here because you have the you have the other the uh, the center bridge that's going to go on. Now, what Terry does in order to do this to make sure he has a little bit of room because you don't want this thing stuck. He's going to utilize the long screws here, right over here. On each end. Yep. And then I'll use a short one here because it'll stay there and that'll line these other two up. Yep. And then at that point, he can realign them once he gets it stuck. He can use the screws where they belong. But this way you can use the longer ones to help you get it aligned. Here. Okay, you just gotta kind of keep wiggling this until you get them started. And I'm using the long ones right here just to get that on there. Now I'll take these little short ones that go here and here, and I'll pull that one out once I get one of these short ones in here. So you don't want to force these screws you, because you will cross you thread them. Thread real easy. Yeah. So just be very careful. Um, you know, you might have to work with it back and forth like Terry's doing. They are very tight. They're designed to be tight like that, so they don't rattle loose while you're going down the road and you lose the wing. So what you want to do is just just snug them up to where they're matching. Okay, and then. These two, the long ones, you want to wait until you put the other piece on. So again, what he's using, he's using the long ones on the each end to be able to set these. Get the little ones. Okay. It has these little rubber things right here. 
you want to put there's a groove you want to put the groove inside and they just kind of sit in there they don't stick or nothing they just kind of sit in there and you want to put all of these on before so they just kind of press into the slot there yeah there's little grooves as you can see the little groove right and this here's got a little groove in it just kind of line the little groove up it's almost like, almost like little o-rings Okay. Okay. Come on now. Okay. Now we'll turn this way, this way. We'll take this guy out. And we'll put a screw in here and this one. Now, here, guys, it's a matter of preference on where you put your bridge. Now, when Terry goes to do them, he likes putting them up high, and a lot of people do. I like them lower, um, so we're going to push this one down. But what that does is that increases the drag or reduces the amount of drag that you have on the car. So, um, so I'm going to actually push it down. It also gives you a little more visibility. Um, one of the other things that I want to point out to you is that um, some of the, uh, I've noticed on some of the lighter colored cars, um, I noticed it on one of the uh, white ones that we have done, that uh, the, the Z51 spoiler actually came down and it was sitting very, very close to the bumper here. And so it actually distorted the color. So with the with the bridge up high, you can actually see that dis distortion of color. But with the bridge mm -hmm. down all the way down, it hides it, and so you don't have that. Uh, you know, you won't be able to see it. So just just so you know. So I got all the screws in. Now I just want to take and tighten them up, and we'll be good to go. You don't have to really put a lot of pressure on this, just snug them up, because you're tight already. And this is where he where Scott wants it, so this we can tighten these up, because that's where he's adjusted this to. Now guys, like I said, you can adjust this to whatever you want. You can bring it all the way up where the center bridge is even with the uh, the wicker bill. And that's totally fine too. It's a matter of preference. But keep in mind, the more that you have it up, then you have a little bit less visibility and you also have a little more drag. So it's pushing the rear end down and it's causing, I don't know if it makes anything cause you any less gas mileage, but probably a little bit. Okay. So guys, hopefully you found this video helpful and informative, and when it comes time for you to be able to put your spoilers and your aero kit on your car, you'll have no problems putting it on. If you follow the instructions and you, and you follow our video to the T, you're not going to have any problems. So I just want to thank you all for watching, supporting the channel, and you guys have a great night. Thank you for watching the Corvette channel. Don't forget to hit subscribe.